Hello, this is Charlotte from the Brixton Buddhist community, and this is an introduction to the Metta Bhavana meditation practice. So this practice originated from the Buddha two and a half thousand years ago, and he was a man who achieved a new state of consciousness, um, which often gets referred to as enlightenment. So it's a state of, um, of full and perfect awakening. And uh, following this, he, he uh, looked um, to communicate with other people so that they could have um, the same experiences as, as he'd had. So he developed teachings that would be helpful. And one of them uh, was this practice, the Metta Bhavna meditation practice. So Metta Bhavna, there are two Pali words. So Pali is an old Indian language. And Metta roughly translates as loving kindness and bhavna as the development or cultivation of. And um, one of the main sources for this practice um, is a teaching called the Karaniya Metta Sutta. I'm just going to read you a section from that teaching, which will just give you a bit of a sense of, of where we're going with the practice before I talk to you about the, the stages, the form that we actually um, do it in. So it goes, then meditate like this. May all be happy and secure. May all beings become happy in their heart of hearts and think of every living thing without exception. The weak and the strong, from the smallest to the largest, whether you can see them or not, living nearby or far away, beings living now or yet to arise. May all beings become happy in their heart of hearts. May no one deceive or look down on anyone anywhere for any reason, whether through feeling angry or through reacting to someone else, may no one want another to suffer. As strongly as a mother, perhaps risking her life, cherishes her child, her only child, develop an unlimited heart for all beings, develop an unlimited heart of friendliness for the entire universe, sending metta above, below and all around, beyond all narrowness, beyond all rivalry, beyond all hatred. Whether you are staying in one place or traveling, sitting down or in bed, in all your waking hours, rest in this mindfulness. So if we're just drawing on that teaching then, um, the practice um, trains us to develop an attitude of unlimited friendliness to all beings. So that's, uh, that's quite a big thing. And uh, this friendliness isn't something sentimental or soft. It's not about kind of having warm, fuzzy feelings for each other. Um, it's like a mother's love for her only child. So it's a very powerful, strong and courageous intention that we're trying to develop. And we're developing our own capacity to go beyond all narrowness and hatred. And that includes all living beings within the universe, whether or not you can see them, those living now and those in the future as well. So it's both humans and uh, non-human life too. And the actual form of the practice that we that we learn that we that we teach here has five stages and in the first four stages you are bringing to mind a different person using the power of your imagination so we imagine things all the time and this is a, a, a maybe a bit more helpful use than some of the things we're imagining and in the first stage you're bringing to mind yourself then in the second stage, you are bringing to mind a friend. And when you're learning the practice, we recommend that you choose someone who's um, relatively similar to you. So someone um, close to you in age, um, not uh, your parent or a child, not someone who's dead, and also not someone that you're sexually attracted to. Just while you're, you're starting to learn the practice, we just try to keep it a bit more simple. And then in the third stage, it's someone that you kind of know of, but that you don't um, you don't know them enough really to know whether you, you like them or dislike them. They're kind of a bit neutral. So this could be someone that you see in the shop or someone at work that you don't know particularly well. And then in the fourth stage, it's, this is traditionally called the enemy stage. And it can it can just be someone that you've been having a little bit of difficulty with recently or it could also be someone um, yeah that you've got um, some really strong dis dislike for 
And perhaps again at the beat the when you're first learning the practice, just choosing someone who, uh, yeah, you, maybe you've got some annoyance towards, but isn't necessarily your arch enemy. Um, when you choose someone who've got very strong uh, negative feelings towards it, you can end up just kind of getting caught up in your stories about what's happened and what you think should happen now. And you can end up getting a bit distracted and derailed. So it's maybe just choose someone who will um, promote a bit of irritation, um, but maybe isn't too complicated to begin with. And then we can uh, work our way into people we find a bit more challenging. So yes, yeah, so we're using our Im imagination to, to bring these people to mind. And our minds are all different, so you might do this in different ways. I often like to imagine someone sat next uh, next to me, maybe uh, on a bench or a sofa. Um, you might imagine them in front of you, or you might just be able to, you know, you might just bring them, might just have an image of them in, in your head. Uh, you might say uh, their name to yourself silently. Yeah, just, just kind of noticing how it is you bring them to mind. You have a, might have a memory of them that helps you bring them to mind. Then you can let go of the memory, but just have a bit more of a sense of them. So that's one area to explore uh, the, uh, while you're doing the practice is, is what works for you best in bringing the person to mind. And, and once they're kind of there in your imagination, you just notice your response to them, particularly in the body particularly in the body, seeing if there's any pleasant or unpleasant sensations in the body um, when, when you um, come into contact with, with them. And then what we're doing is we're developing a sense of friendliness towards them. And it's not, as I said, it's not really about having kind of a warm, kind of fuzzy feeling. It's much more about setting an intention to wish them well, for them to be happy and to be free from suffering. So even with the fourth person, the, the person you're finding difficult, um, you can still, you might still be angry with them, so it's not negating that, you might still be angry with them, but you're also, you're just acknowledging that they are like everybody else who also wants to be happy, and you can, you can wish them um, that. And one of the ways that you can wish people well is through um, just saying it, in your, saying it in your mind. Um, so what we're suggesting that you do while you're learning the practice is to say, may they be well, may they be happy, may they be free from suffering. And you can just drop in those sentences. Um, you don't need to say it over and over again, just drop them in a couple of times. And then again, notice what your response is in your body. Do you have any pleasant, unpleasant or neutral sensations in the body when you've wished them well? And then in the fifth stage, you're bringing all the people to mind and you're trying to equalize your intention of friendliness and well-wishing to all of them. So can you, can you um, wish your friend and the person you find difficult and the person you don't know so well um, all to be happy and um, kind of to the same extent? And then what we do is we start to include more and more living beings um, in all directions, uh, near you, far away, um, all across all across the world. So you might start off with just the people in the um, building around you, your family and friends and work colleagues, people in the local area, and then you can start expanding out to the rest of the country, to um, other continents as well. So we're going all around the world. We're including all life, so that includes animals and plants as well as humans. And we're also bringing to mind all life in the future as well and also outside of the earth so across the universe to any other life that might be in the universe now or in the future. So it's a really radical practice yeah it's a really radical practice that starts with yourself and it ends uh, with all life throughout time and space. And then to finish the practice you can just spend a, f a few minutes just stop making any effort at all, stop trying to do anything and just see how, how you are. You can notice the breath, notice the body. And just to remember that the main object um, of the meditation is that the people that you're bringing to mind in each stage and developing this intention of loving kindness or friendliness towards them. <laughs>